Boom, boom. Greetings all. Last Outrider back with part 16 of Who Are the Black Legion? This time we're going to start on the Gothic War. As the 41st millennium dawned, Abaddon's dark plan edged towards its zenith, and his assaults upon the Imperium escalated. In the Gothic sector, the War Master led the Black Legion in a war of conquest and hunted down and captured the ancient and powerful Blackstone Fortresses. The Twelfth Black Crusade heralded the start of a millennium of blood for the Black Legion, and they appeared in greater numbers than ever before. In the Gothic sector, Abaddon sparked a terrible war that raged for over 30 years and consumed millions of lives. It became the largest Black Crusade yet and drew in Imperial Guard regiments and Space Marine chapters from worlds thousands of light years away. It also revealed, for the first time, the size and power of the Black Legion's fleet leading to naval engagements that rivaled those of the Horus Heresy almost 10,000 years before. However, the Gothic War was not merely about sacking of worlds and the harvesting of slaves. Abaddon was after something far more terrible, something that would allow him, at last, to strike forth against Terra itself. Firstly, he needed a key. He turned once again to his cabal of sorcerers, bidding them to delve into the future for him. Led by the enigmatic sorcerer of Zinch, Zarephiston, the cabal had been scouring the warp for clues as to the locations of the artifacts that Abaddon coveted. At long last, Zerathon, Zerathistan was able to bring the gibbering remains of a demon before his master, and the beast revealed the name of the one who held the secrets the despoiler desired. Hidden deep within the howling caves of Vorsea Secundus, Abaddon met with the ancient blood seer Moriana. When Abaddon emerged from the witch's cave, it was with new purpose and the names of two remote worlds and the part they would play in his plan. Zarephistan could no longer see the tangled web of fates that stretched out before the War Master. Where before, there had been certainty in following specific paths or clear indications of future events. Now, only darkness greeted the Zinchian Cabal. Abaddon dismissed the concerns of his sorceress advisors and even the counsel of his chosen. He was about to embark upon the penultimate act of his revenge against the Imperium. That the fates were uncertain only further strengthened his conviction of victory. If his future was unknown, then so too was the future of the Imperium. So... <clears throat> I'm going to take a little break, but you can see right there. I mean, that end part, I think, is pretty conclusive. The same uh, skills and tactics that Farseers of the Eldar use to look into the future and see the different threads of fate to see what is going to turn out in the future, they officially are saying they can no longer see the future. They can no longer see any certain outcome to any events, which is, as Abaddon said, he takes that as a good thing, 
because that means if they can't see the Imperium existing, if they can't see the Emperor winning and beating him, if they can't see any possibility, then that means there's just as much chance that Abaddon destroys the Imperium in the 13th Crusade as it is that he loses. Uh, that is definitely Games Workshop telling you this could be the end. Next, Night and Darkness. The first world to feel the wrath of the War Master was Purgatory, a bleak frontier planet of rugged mountains and dark, brooding forests. Using an advanced force of infiltrating night lords to take out key strongholds, the Black Legion were able to smash their way into the world's ancient Skyguard fortress. Brushing aside the ill-equipped Purgation planetary defense forces and the Arcadian allies with brutal contempt, the Black Legion fought their way into the heart of the structure. In the Stygian well buried deep beneath the fortress, Abaddon took from its resting place the Hand of Darkness, an object of ancient and terrible power that had long been hidden away by the Inquisition. The Hand of Darkness was the first part of a key that Abaddon would use to activate the ancient Blackstone fortresses. Six of these unimaginably powerful space stations had been discovered in the Gothic sector by the Imperium. Relics from an age before the rise of mankind. Though the Imperium had used them for centuries as orbital bases and void stations, they had no idea of the true scope of their power. It was a mistake that Abaddon planned to exploit in the most violent and terrible way possible. Alone, the Hand of Darkness would not be enough for Abaddon to completely awaken the Black Stones. Leaving behind the ruins of Purgatory, he led the Black Legion to Orn's World, a rattling world that had so far been spared the worst of the Gothic War. This all changed in a single bloody night, as the Black Legion descended upon the stockade cities and maze mines of the Rattlings, burning and killing any living thing they could find. By dawn, almost every settlement was ablaze, and the smoke of a million burning corpses choked the sky. Though they had but fought desperately, the Abhumans were no match for the traitor space marines, and most had died before they even had a chance to run. At the center of the great wooden citadel of the Watlings, now reduced to smoldering timbers, stood a towering statue to an unknown god. From this statue, Abaddon plucked the Eye of Night, an inky black gemstone that had gazed down upon the diminutive men for centuries. With this potent object, the War Master once more set off into the void with his Black Legion in tow, ready at last to seize the first of the Blackstone Fortresses and bring ruin and death to the worlds of the Gothic Sector. And next time, we're going to talk about Fortress of Spite. Now, for any of you who'd like computer games and buy the new Battlefleet Gothic game, you'll actually be able to play these battles and actually get these items in the game. And if you already have the game, you already know that. But until next time, bye. Mm.